Yo, Elliot. So let's begin. I think the best place to begin is by answering the question that many of you are probably asking, which is, Elliot, where the hell have you been for the past eight months and what the heck have you been doing? So the best way for me to approach that question is to use a metaphor for what the past 10 years have been for me in my life. Somebody asked me on my online coaching program, Elliot, you know, I do a Q&A and they said, Elliot, uh, can you describe your mindset when you were first beginning your work years ago, uh, during the phases of success that you've attained and where you are right now? And the way I answered his question was, imagine that in the beginning, 10 years ago, I was running from the darkness. I mean, times were dark. And I think a lot of you can probably relate to it, and that's why my videos are so relatable to you, because you know what it's like to have darkness surround you. You know what it's like to be hungry, not to have, but to be striving. That striving is usually out of fear. So there has been a process of running from the fear of darkness, early on in my work, early on in that 10 year period. And then as I think it works for anybody who just keeps running, there's a period where you start to see that light at the end of the tunnel, right? And the middle phase, fear started to disappear because I saw that the light was just ahead. I think you could describe, I think that time was essentially between 2012 and 2014, early 2014. By, by 2014, I had come so close to the light that it began to absorb me and blind me. So if you could just take for a moment and think of that spectrum of pure darkness, running towards the light, getting towards the light, and then the light ah, scorching you because it's just so damn bright. Your pupils can't do, don't know what to do with it, can't absorb it, can't deflect it, you get burnt up by it. And I think that's exactly what has, ha what has happened and what you've watched, as if you've watched my videos, I mean, go back to 2007 when I think I put up my very first video, you're watching a very fearful young man, right? I'm gonna turn this off. You're watching a very fearful young man trying to do the best that he can to get where he wants to be one day because he's got dogs chomping out his ass, you know? I, I was deeply in debt and I had a family and I'm trying to start a business, I'm trying to do my work, I'm trying to fulfill my purpose, even though I don't even know what it is. But I'm just running. A lot of you guys are like that. Run, you should run because you shouldn't live in darkness. But if you keep on running, you're going to see that light. You're going to see that, that little, that, at the end of the tunnel. It just looks, in the beginning, it just looks like a little circle. And that's when things start working out a little bit. You start to say, hey, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting some rewards from this. And as you keep going towards it, what happens to that little circle, right? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you just keep running. And you start to feel the euphoria and the passion, the excitement associated with getting closer and closer and closer until it starts to absorb you. Just imagine like the light gets so bright that you just become absorbed by it, blinded by it, and completely disoriented, right? Because it's just too much light. If you've been in darkness, just do it at home. If you've been in darkness and you're in a dark closet and somebody flashes the light on, what happens? Ah, ugh, right? When you first wake up in the morning, you gotta... Ugh. So if you're wondering where I've been for the past eight months, it's been a matter of me trying to figure out how to handle all of this light. Right? And that's the metaphor that I'd like to use today in describing five of the things that I've learned during my time off. In trying to make sense of the light, process it, deal with it responsibly. Because a part of what happens with the light is if you're not, if your ego isn't strong enough, if you don't know how to uh, objectify it, if you don't know how to create separation between yourself and the light, you become inflated by it. 
You know, this is a Jungian term. I've been studying a lot of Carl Jung's work. And, uh, and as I'll describe throughout these five things that I've learned, you know, part of what happened was I became inflated by the light. And, uh, and that can be a dangerous thing because it's so luminous and so powerful that it will destroy you if you don't create, create separation between yourself and it, you know. And, that, and I use the metaphor of light, but it could mean anything in the realm of success, anything in the realm of what you're, you're seeking to achieve. You know, so I've got my phone here because I took some notes. I don't normally do this, but I wanted to make sure that I hit on these points for you guys so that this can be uh, an informative yet educational or, or an entertaining video for you. So the very first thing that uh, the very first mistake or, or I don't want to call it a mistake, but um, ignorance, lack of understanding uh, about how to deal with in this new phase of my development, my life. And again, I just share these things with you because I feel as if, uh, if I share my stories, they'll support you as you grow stronger on your journey. You know, I don't tell you these stories because I want to brag or boast or I'm so self-absorbed that all I want to do is talk about myself. I talk about these things because my story is your story. It's our story. You know, and if you study Joseph Campbell, and this is why I talk about the hero's journey, and if you watched my, uh, my video series on Strength Camp, you know, I did that whole hero's journey thing, right? The call to adventure, the journey, and then the legacy. It's because it's a recurring motif. It's something that shows up in all mythology. It shows up over and over and over again in cross-cultural studies. It's the human story. You know, and if I share this with you, and uh, as I experience it, as a contemporary man living in the United States in this day and age, then perhaps you can glean some, uh, some, some bits of wisdom just by the mistakes I've made. You know, it's, it's not that I'm any smarter, I, just got, I might have just some more experiences than many of you. So, in dealing with the light, the mistake or the ill or the sin that I carried was that rest is for the weak. This is a beautiful idea when you're in warrior mode. This is a beautiful idea when you're in the darkness. When you're in the darkness, rest is for the weak. It's a paradigm that supports you when shit is going bad. You can't fucking rest when there's a dog chomping at your ass, right? Some of you guys are too restful, and then your life ends up being stale. So I tell you to do things like throw away your, throw away your video game machine or move out of your parents' house so that the dog is chomping at your ass. Now you can't rest. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, so the, the paradigm associated with that is rest is for the weak. What I actually learned is that you should prepare for action while minimizing activity. In other words, manage your energy. The way that looks practically is, if you look and you notice behind me, I'm not at the gym anymore. I literally had to remove myself from the environment from which I developed myself. Uh, being in the gym and being amongst all the, the people and the environment that was associated with striving and, 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 uh, and, and, and grinding didn't allow me the space to Step back, be objective, meditate, read, breathe, relax, so that I could manage what is coming at me now. You see, so I literally had to change my environment. And I think that's just a principle for any of us who are, who are going through life changes, who are going through an evolution. You can't be in the same space. You know, uh, it, through, in, in the initiation process, which all cultures are familiar with in some way, shape, or form, there's a sacred space. There is a container in which you, you go into order to grow, or a cocoon of sorts. And the very first thing in order to manage my energy and the, and, and the luminous energy moving through me, you know, you could call it uh, cosmic consciousness or God, was that I had to create separation and space so that I could be literally humbled. You know, I couldn't be Elliot Hulse in order to allow the evolution to happen. And, it, and, and the fastest way to not be yourself is to change environments, right? So many of you are in high school, and then you go to college and you're a different person, right? You're not that same guy that you were in high school because the environment gave you an opportunity to change your character. I had to change my environment in order to change my character. And it, the environment has allowed me now to relax, 
and not constantly have blasting rap and hardcore music in my ears, people coming to the door all the time looking for me. You know, it got a little crazy where you know people show up and I, you know, I don't blame you guys. You want to come see Strength Camp and meet Elliot, but um, you know that keeps me constantly on my toes. I'm constantly having to look out and and see, you know, and do I have to prepare to entertain? You know, constantly entertaining. I, so there's the second one. I had to stop making videos because I can't constantly be entertaining. I could not constantly keep up the go 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 go. There are not too many other YouTubers that have more videos than me in our niche. The only other ones are probably the Hodge Twins because they make a lot of videos. And I took that same approach and I made a lot of videos. But I, again, managing energy required that I stop. So you might have to stop doing the things that make you believe you are A, B, or C, you know? The thing that, the thing that keeps you keeps you believing that you're a certain thing. If you think you're a baseball player and you stop paying, playing baseball, there's gonna be a challenge there because your ego construct will have to be dissolved, right? And I make videos. I had to stop making videos in order to manage my energy. So I'll continue. I have a few other things here, including uh, regular sleep patterns, you know, making sure that I'm not getting up at 4.30 in the morning to work more. I actually have to sleep. Go figure, right? I'm a human being. I stopped weight training. So if you're wondering what I did for the past eight months, it wasn't working out. It was doing yoga. I did yoga every single day for eight months straight. I put a hammock, there's a hammock in my office and I often talk about the benefits of having a, being rocked and lulled into rest. And I think that every warrior, and that tends to be my, my predominant energy is warrior fire aggressive energy needs somewhere, some space, some way of being cuddled, coddled, soothed, and rocked. You see, I rock myself. Even if you notice in a lot of my videos, I rock myself because it's soothing. But laying in the hammock is, a, is one of the ways that we can soothe ourselves and rock ourselves out of aggression. Number two, can't do it alone. The, 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 the falsehood, the miss, the sin was, I can do it, I don't need you. And that's a purely a warrior's attitude. That's a purely running in the darkness, running from the darkness attitude. If you've got a dog chasing at your ass, chomping at you, you're not thinking about how, anybody else but your ass. Right? And that was a resourceful way of being during a particular period of time. But as the light began to absorb me, I realized, shit, I can't handle this by myself. I need help. I've been blessed enough, lucky enough, and strategic enough to have a wife that has been my partner, my best friend, my greatest, she's my biggest fan, she's my biggest supporter, she is 100% Elliot Hulse, as much as Elliot Hulse is 100% Elliot Hulse. There is no me. You don't know me without that woman, and she's been this way for, with me since the time we were children. We've been together, we dated throughout high school and college, you know, and um, I'm the man who I am today because of her. But I realized that I needed to invite more people into my life in an intimate way. And as you've probably realized through the Strength Camp videos, that there, I'm, sur I'm surrounded by lots of very fascinating people now. I'm surrounded by a lot of su a huge support staff. You know, if my mission is to be bigger than me, then I have to give it away and share it and allow, op create opportunities for other people to bring the mission into fruition, you see? And, uh, and, and that's what I learned. That's one of the things I learned during this time. Um, of course, you know, the more people that uh, you support, the more people will support you. It's, it's kind of, you know, playing that that give and take games. You know, I'm really happy to be able to bring these people into my life and bless them with opportunities at the same time they support the mission and help grow Strength Camp. Number three, talk less and listen more. See, this is tough for me because you know what I did for, for eight months? I stopped talking. Right, and we're already going on 15 minutes of this video, and it's challenging for me because I really became personally identified with what got me where I am, which is I answer questions. 
And I began being Yo Elliot in my daily life and, and it didn't work real well. You know, it didn't work. It doesn't work at home. It doesn't work with friends when you've got an answer for fucking everything. You know, it, it, it's a little difficult right now because I'm going to begin answering questions right now. And you know what? I don't feel like I have very many answers anymore. I watch some of my old videos and I laugh and I'm like, why does this motherfucker have an answer for everything? My parents used to say that to me too. Elliot, you got an answer for everything. As that light blinded me, you know what it also did? Humbled me. It humbled the Elliot Hulse construct, the ego configuration that ran towards it. It just it obliterated it. I'm still trying to pick up the pieces and figure out how to manage this thing. Because I love wisdom. I love sharing. I love fitness. I love making these videos. But quite frankly, guys, I don't have an answer for as, much, as many of the things as you've been asking me. I, you know, I, I, I listen to myself asking the questions in the videos that I used to make and then giving an answer. And I'm like, why the fuck did I answer that? Because I'm just, I'm just talking for the sake of talking. And maybe that's what I do. Maybe I just talk for the sake of talking and stuff just comes out of my mouth. So, is it right? I don't know. Is it wrong? I don't know. But one thing for sure is, I don't know. And that's, a, that's been a process, has been a part of the infantile grandiosity. The inflation of believing that I was the ego construct of Elliot Hulse. You know, that was a tool. And I kind of understood it too. I've made videos where I said, I'm not Elliot Hulse. Because I understood, I knew at, an, at a primordial level that fuck, I'm developing and growing into an ego construct that will have to destruct, it will have to be fragmented at some point in order for me to grow and to be, for me to become the next evolution of whatever it is that cosmic consciousness or God is moving through me, right? God is dynamic. The universe is dynamic, constantly moving. Your physical body is dynamic. You're not who you were yesterday. Physiologically either. All of your cells are constantly in motion. They're constantly in flux. If we get attached at any point to one version of ourselves, we're defying God. We're not going with the Tao, if you will. You know, so it's a matter of letting go and not believing that you are what you think you are today. I am not Yo Elliot. Uh, number four, create and commit to life building daily rituals. So the false idea was do big things. You do big things. And I think this is a cultural, our, our young people think that you can get success by doing big things. I'm gonna do big shit right now. I'm telling you right now that it's not a matter of doing big things. It's a matter of doing the little things in a right way every single day. I, again, you know, I share these things not because I know, I share these things because I've experienced. And I can tell you right now that doing big things burns you the fuck out and it's unsustainable. Have a grand vision, have a big idea, but do little things every single day in a very long term manner. So some of the things that I've had to commit to is, uh, again, yoga. You know, yoga isn't doing big things because weight training is doing big things. Lifting a 400 pound log over your head is doing big things. Doing downward dog and sun salutations is not doing big things. It's doing little things. And I did it every single day as a ritual. I think that's really the, the magic word here. Uh, also with nutrition, you know, I got to be completely honest, you know, I even said to you in the past, don't take too much nutrition advice from Elliot Hulse because I am a binger. I'll do a binge diet and get the results I want. And then I'll, if watch my videos again, it only takes, the proof is in the pudding. Just watch somebody, and you know what's going on. You know, I got videos where I'm, I look like this. I got videos where I look like this. What's going on with that guy, right? Because I binge, I get huge and I get skinny. And, uh, and over the course of the past eight months, I've been working with a nutrition coach specifically to get myself on a diet that's long term and sustainable. I hired him for six months and I'll probably work with him for another six months. Because I've, I, like I've even said, it's long term, take a year. You know, I'm cutting again, but in the past when I was cutting, it was a matter of, I'm gonna cut this shit out right now. Boom, doing big things. I'm not doing big things anymore. I'm doing a little bit of the right thing every single day. Number five, finally, right? It's gonna be a 20 minute video. Elliot Hulse comes back with a 20 minute video. 
do the difficult thing, it works out in the end. And I know it sounds like redundant because Elliot always talks about doing the difficult thing. Well, it was a difficult thing for me to stop. And I resisted it. I didn't take my own advice. I, I lacked integrity for, for quite a few months, for about eight months. I think it was eight months of, of fighting the river and then eight months of yielding into the river. I was trying to swim upstream since January 2014. January 2014, I started to sense. God was telling me cosmic consciousness was moving through me. The universe had planned, but I, ego, said, nah, fuck that. And I started swimming upstream. Right? I used this metaphor for somebody the other day. Imagine that you get into the river and allow it to carry you. At some point, you know, that's, a, that's really what's happening. We think that we're creating our lives, but really we are allowing our lives. You know, we set visions and we have ideas for where we want to go. And of course that influences things, but we don't really make things happen so much as we allow them to happen. A lot of times it's getting out of the way. So imagine, you know, you're going down this river and, uh, and as you're going down the river, you know, just imagine if it was, uh, you know, the, when I use that light metaphor, imagine now it's a river. You're first in that river and you're in that boat and it's crickets and scary things and, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a negative environment. You're scared as fuck. And you get down the river and you start to see, whoa, you hear music playing and you start seeing, what it looks like there's a city down there. And you start seeing beautiful women coming and you smell food. Mm, and, you get, and you keep going down that river and you get to it and you get to that place. Now you don't get off your boat because life is always moving, but the people are coming out and they're giving you some food. Get some beautiful women come over and give you a kiss. Yeah, you know, all the good things, right? They give you a drink, smoke some ganja, right? So you're, you're in that beautiful part where it's like, man, things are going really well until that river continues to go and you start looking back at whoa, 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 whoa. I liked it in that village. I liked when I was floating through that, but life doesn't work that way. Life is dynamic. Life is constantly moving and you say, I can't leave it. And you start trying to paddle. You take that paddle and you start going upstream, right? You start paddling back upstream. What are you doing? You're going against the current, not knowing that life has something else for you. Life had something else for me. You know, I, 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 I saw the light, you know, I saw the light. I was absorbed by the light, inflated, blinded, you know, what does it mean to be blinded? You don't see. I, and I, and I was lacking my ability to see reality. And when I decided to quit making YouTube videos, it's kind of like I put that paddle down and I said, you know what? I got to trust this river. And it took me. And I can tell you that all of our pain comes from trying to paddle uphill. All of our pain comes from attaching ourselves to the things that, uh, to, the, to, the, to the character that we think we are and to the things that we think we own. When the reality is that life is found in yielding to the river, and allowing it to take you on the adventure that it wants you to have. When you were born into this world, you were born into this river. I was born into this river. I'm grateful for the river that I was born into. And if you're watching this video, I dare you to pray a, a prayer of gratitude for being born into the river that you, you're born in today because in this day and age, it's a beautiful thing. All of our, per, all of our problems, you know, they say first world problems. Because you could have been born in a different place. You know, there are parts of the world right now that are steeped in darkness. And that was the river those people were born into. I'm pretty sure that there was a time, see I sort of believe in reincarnation. I believe there was a time when I was born into darkness. You know, there, and there was a time, like if you look, if you, if you know the history of Africa, Africa is, is, is steeped in darkness right now. I mean, conflict after conflict and, you know, empires raping it of its resources. But there was a time when Africa was the land of kings and queens. Right? It's just a different time in a different place. Be grateful to be born in the time and place. To partake of the technology that allows you to gain wisdom through the internet. You see, I don't know, I'm starting to rant now as if this whole video was in a rant. But, you know, I'm grateful for you. 
grateful for this opportunity, grateful to be doing the work that I'm doing. I'm grateful for the time and day that I'm born into. And I trust that all the experiences that I have and the all experiences that you have are for the collective good. And if you're in pain right now, today, if you're in darkness, or if your whole life is steeped in darkness, keep going. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you're absorbed with light, and if things are good, be grateful, because the light always dims at some point. Done. Yo, Elliot.